Hello guys and welcome back to this Unity tutorial series. In the previous video we got over how to install Unity and we've started making a simple brick breaker game. In this video we're going to continue with that and we're going to make a block. So to do that let's go into our sprites folder and we will import sprites for our block. So for this I've prepared three sprites. Drag and drop them here and make sure to set the pixels per unit to 32 and I want them to be point no filter hit apply and that's it now we're going to create a material for them so let's see how it looks like that it's a standard block we don't want it like that so let's create a material create shader graph URP and a sprite and lit shader graph. Let's call it block and double click it to start editing. We will maximize this window. For that, let's bring our sprites here and we'll need all three of them, so let's drag them at once like that. Just make sure you have the right names. So this is the default block, this one is for the light, and this one will be for the shadow. Let's arrange this a little bit, like that, and we will start working with this one. So we want to color it. Actually, uh, it's a white block, so all the channels have the same value. Let's take one of them and search for a multiply node. We will need a color, so add new color and let's call it base color drag it here and link it like that let's change the default the default value to something bright it doesn't have to be the same like me just uh, just something that you like now we want to apply light to it so how we do that is like this with a blend node it's pretty simple Search for a blend node. This will be linked to base. This one also will be linked to base. And we will link the alpha here. We want the alpha because if you have not, this uh, texture has transparency and we want to apply the white shade only where it's visible and it will be transparent in other parts. And the blend mode, we will set it to screen. Like that. So you see we have now a nice light effect. Next, we want to apply the shadow. Let's bring this here. And for this, we will need this one texture here. We'll use again another blend node. Link this to base. And the alpha here will be linked to the opacity. Here we will choose a burn mode. This is too dark, obviously, so we will need another color for the shadow. So here, color, and let's call it shadow. It will tint the shadows and drag it here. Let's change the default color to something grayish. I think that's fine. And link this to the base color output. Make sure to save the asset. And let's create a material out of it. So we select the shader and create material. Let's call it block. Now back to our scene view and drag and drop it simply like that. And you see we have a nice red block. It can be customized here. We can change the color to anything we like and the shadow tint as well. Let's keep it like that for now. And next, we're going to make it a prefab. So what's a prefab? A prefab is a pre-prepared object that we are gonna use in our game later. So simply convert it to prefab by dragging and drop it in, dropping it in the project view. Now we can delete it here. And whenever we need it, just drag and drop it here. And we have different instances of our block. Now, we want to intimate this 
through a script. So let's go to our scripts folder and we will create our first script. So create C sharp script and we will call it spawner. And open it by hitting enter. I'm using Rider, also you can use Visual Studio, it will be exactly the same. Once you open it, you'll see that we have a class with the same name as our script. Make sure it's the same name, otherwise it won't work. It inherits from Mono Behavior, which is uh, presented by Unity. And we have these two default methods here, start and update. The start method executes once the object is first enabled and the update method will execute every frame. There are other methods so but we will explain them once we get to them. Let's explain something real quick about Unity scripting. For example, let me declare a variable here. I'll declare a private one, private int, let's call this one a, and another public, let's call this one b. Let's go back to the editor, wait for it to compile, and we will create a new game object. So right click in the hierarchy and create empty. Let's call this spawner. It doesn't have to be the same name as uh, the script, so pick anything you like, but make it uh, reasonable. Drag and drop the script here, and now we have a component. But you notice that we have only the B variable here. So why is that? Because Unity serializes only public variables. By default, you can also serialize private variables by adding this decorator here, serialize field. And I prefer using this rather than making any, everything public because it's a bad habit to expose every variable. And here it is. Now you can modify the variables from here. So that's done. We don't need these now. And we will get now a reference to our prefab. Our prefab is of type game object, so let's create a field for it. So serialize field private game object and we will call it block. Once we're back to the editor, you'll see that we have a field to drag and drop it here. So go to our prefabs folder and let's assign it. Now we have a reference to our block. Let's start by instantiating one block. So simply go here and in the start method, make sure you are in start method, not in the update, otherwise it will get performance heavy. And instantiate, this is used to instantiate game objects. Block, we will give it where to instantiate it. So let's create it in the origin, so vector3.0 and we won't give it any rotation, so quaternion.identity There are uh, different overloads for this method, but mostly we're gonna use only this one so we pass first the game object that we are going to create second, the position and third, the rotation Let's go back to, uh, to the editor And let's run the game. There it is. We have a nice block in the middle of our screen. Let's exit play mode. Now we want to give it random colors. This is pretty simple. So another serialized field. Private list of type color. and we will call it colors. Uh, what this means is that we have a list and each element of the list is of type color. We call the list colors. And uh, if you are writing standard C-sharp code, 
this won't work because you will have to initialize it like this but unity does that for us so no need for that and here if we want to change the color we will need a reference to the game object because instantiate just instantiates it and we have no reference to it so simply game object let's call it block uh, yeah this will cover this field here so we'll change it to underscore block and to get the renderer renderer is this sprite renderer here the sprite renderer holds the color of our block let's open it and you notice if I change the color things get messed up because we will not use that tint here we're going to access the material from our sprite renderer and we will change the color of our material so let's go back here block dot get component is used to get components of our game object and we need a sprite renderer here dot material dot color equals a random color from this list that we will assign in the editor so colors and here a random number random dot range zero inclusive and the upper value is exclusive so colors dot count this means that we are going to have a random number from zero to the number of colors but this number of colors will not be included in the range so the maximum value will be the count minus one and this will give us a value in the range of our list let's go back to the editor back to the scene view and if i run the game you'll notice that nothing will happen and that's because if you have noticed we have changed the name of our color in the blackboard by default it's name it color so we have to set the new name here let's go back to our script and in order to do that we won't do it this way we need to call set color and we will give it the name of our color notes here that we will give it this reference name here underscore base color copy it like that and give it another parameter for the color so colors of random dot range from zero to colors dot count here the id recommends to use an id so just click this and it's refactor there is no problem if you keep it as it is if the id hasn't proposed suggested that it will work just fine let's go back here and let's run the game again and you notice it has a different color now now let's set our camera to have the right size so i have experimented with some values and found that the value of 10 works pretty well something like this will do just fine now we will set the position of the player bar so let's come here and select it in the hierarchy it's still called pixel so let's call it player let's set the x position to zero and bring it down a little bit more something like that we do the same thing for the ball set this to zero and something like this for now we will set it later once we add physics now we will add into our script how to instantiate multiple blocks so let's create another function for that and call it private void instantiate 
blocks. It won't take any parameters. And it will have two for loops for int i equals zero, i is less than eight, and this is eight, and i plus plus for g starting from zero to thirty one. These are the values that I experimented with in here. And J will be incremented by three each time. <coughs> That's because the block width is three units, not one. And we will instantiate it the same way that we have done it here. Copy this and paste it here. Same for this line to set the color reformat the code and we want these we won't need these two here we'll just call this function instantiate blocks now let's go back to our game view and we will run the code uh, everything here is scrammed on top of each other but actually if I move the block Others will be there and hurt. Uh, I've moved the camera here, no problem, we'll put it back later. But all the blocks are scrambled one on top of the other. That's because I haven't set a new position here for them. So if we go back to Unity now, let's test for some values. Let's bring the prefab here, and I want it to start from somewhere around here. A value of minus 15 here will be fine and I want it to be a little down because I'll add later a wall and a score value in, in the upper part it will go up to plus 15 and for the rows it will go about the middle of the screen a value of minus 0 0.5 will be fine so let's write this down in the code. Here will be a new vector 3, j minus 15, i minus 0 0.5. So the x value will be uh, from minus 15 to 15. And the vertical y value will be from 7.5 to minus 0 0.5. Also, the z value will be 0. Let's go back to Unity and test this out. Before running the game, let's remove this block here and test it. Now you see that we have a nice grid of blocks here. So I think this is enough for this video. If you like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave your questions in the comments, we will be glad to answer them, and see you next time!